new multimodal omnimodal model LLM by NVIDIA where they have three architecture improvements and data improvements and training improvements. So this is how to create uh, omnimodal large language models that understand video, audio, images, text and everything. And they have very good three architectural ideas to improve this. First, they focus on shared latent space. So latent space, imagine it as if you have an image of a dog, you will convert that image of a dog into a vector, array of numbers. And those numbers should represent the semantic meaning of a dog, what a dog is and how it behaves. And to be more precise here, if you have image of a dog and you or some frame from a video and you have also audio of dog barking, then both of the, when both of those are represented in vectors, in latent vectors, in numbers, uh, those vectors should be very close to each other in the space, in the latent space. So their semantic meaning is similar. If vectors are nearby in latent space, then the model knows they are related. It will help the model understand that those vectors, those things are related. So a sentence, the dog is lying and the picture of a dog that's lying and maybe barking. Maybe sentence, the sentence and picture are even more similar. So they could be even closer together. But depending on if you encode only tokens, then token dog has its own vector. And the picture of the dog has its own vector, so they can be very similar. And then elephant would be a bit away, but it would still maybe not be too far away because it's still an animal. Maybe some unrelated word would be very far away in the latent space. This is literally how large language models and omnimodal LLMs learn. That's how they understand the difference, the similarities between different concepts. It's just these vectors. If the vectors are close, they know that they are similar or related. Or they also know, depending on what vectors are around it. So if you have uh, vision tokens and audio tokens, classically, people would just stitch them together, put vision tokens first, put audio tokens after in the context window. And then LLM would just be, should learn to correlate them from scratch, which is not good because LLM now needs to do a lot of heavy lifting. It, there is no way to indicate that these are close together here, that they are maybe from the same video. It's not indicated in any way. But their method, OmniAgentNet, and using contrastive loss, they are actually indicating to the LLM that some video frames and audio are from the exact same video, they correspond to each other. The idea here, let's say you have some tokens that correspond to one video and audio tokens that correspond to that video as well. And you have for the second video and third video, so this OmniAgent Net is rewarded for transforming tokens or vectors from same video and audio to make them closer together, more similar. And uh, pulling different tokens from different video and audios away from each other. So it would be rewarded for pulling video one and audio one of that video together, the tokens. It would be punished if it pulls uh, video one and audio two together. That's not good. This contrastive loss makes it do both things at the same time, pull together tokens from the same video and pull away tokens from different videos. This is done because now LLM, when it sees these tokens, it will know that they are close together and it will know that if tokens are close together, uh, audio, video, they belong to the same video. So video tokens, they can be broken up into images, frames and stuff. So there is a bunch of tokens for video, for visual. There is a bunch of tokens for audio, but they all get kind of pulled together if it's from the same video. And then from different videos, they get bunched up in a different place. So they have some vector, input vector, that they want to transform to make it closer to some other vector. So it's going to be multiplied with the weight matrix of that uh, layer, network layer, that's learned during the training and added bias vector.
So that's how they're gonna shift transform stretch squish. So that's how they're gonna make, uh, for example, tokens from the same video and audio closer together. So LLM knows if the, it already sees they are close, so it knows if they are from the same video. So now we know how it understands that this audio corresponds to this video of this person speaking. But within that audio and video, how does it know which point happened where exactly? So how does it understand how this video and audio go through time and how they are correlated through time as the video goes? So OmniAgentNet just understands that this image of a person or this frame or this part of video of a person speaking corresponds to this audio of a voice, but it doesn't know the precise sequence and timing of events. And so there are two more modules to solve this. Temporal embedding grouping to understand the relative order of events. Constrained rotary time embedding for understanding the absolute timestamp of events. So let's say we feed uh, frame 1, frame 2, frame 3, frame 4 into the model and after that audio 1, audio 2, audio 3. Well, the model doesn't know and we don't even know if audio 2 happened exactly when frame 2 happened. That's not clear at all. Maybe it did, did not happen like that. Because these are all tokens, remember, they are vector embeddings. So vector embedding that describes this audio 2 may actually not happen at the same time that this vector embedding frame for frame 2 happened. So how do we know which happened at the same time? It uses temporal embedding grouping, which will group these video or image or frame embeddings with the audio based on time chunks. It will put them together in the same time chunks to show that they happened at the same time. So let's say we have a 10 second video clip. TEG will divide it into two parts, five seconds each. So from 0 to 5 and from 6 to 10, let's say, or 5 to 10, whatever you want to say. And it will simply group all of the vision frames or video frames that happen between 0 and 5 seconds and audio frames that happen between 0 and 5 seconds and then it will interleave them. So now it will no longer put all of the frames and then all of the audio. Now it will group together these pairs. So look. Uh, vision from chunk 1, audio from chunk 1, vision from chunk 2, audio. So it's now it's interlead. It's not all of the vision first and then all of the audio second. And this solves the problem of LLM not knowing when exactly these video tokens and these audio tokens correspond to each other at which time steps. And then last architecture improvement, constrained rotary time embedding. The main advantage here is even though we know what vision and audio tokens happen between 0 and 5 seconds. We actually don't know when exactly within that win uh, window they happened. So we still don't know like which frames correspond to which sounds within that 5 seconds. So that's what uh, constrained rotary time embeddings will solve. They will give order to those tokens and encode when exactly each of them happens within the chunks as well. And they do that, they work similarly to rotary position embeddings that rotate vectors, token vectors, based on how far they are in the sequence. So starting from the beginning of the sequence to the end, they're going to rotate these token vectors at different frequencies. So this is a bit more complex to understand rotary positional embeddings. I have videos, there are other videos on YouTube, but know that if you have a sequence of tokens, you want to encode their order. Which, in which order they come, because transformer, the attention mechanism, doesn't know that you need to explicitly add order information into the vector. So transformer then knows which tokens come before which, which is important for understanding the sentence. So uh, they do that by rotating some of the dimensions or all of the dimensions, depending on the implementation of the vectors. And so this applied here as well they're rotating these tokens and then this will give this will give order within the chunk and also the global order of all of the tokens which is on one hand it might be redundant on because the global order order is already given by these chunks 
but maybe it will work better. It's useful. Uh, the way I understand it's actually useful that we have two ways of encoding global order of tokens with this method and with this method as well. So this serves two purposes. The global, again, the global order of chunks and within the chunks, it's also showing the order. And it encodes exact timestamp. It's not just the order, but the exact timestamp. So it can encode that this token happened at 3.75 seconds. So the model can differentiate. For example, person A speaks at 1.1 seconds, person B replies at 1.5 seconds, or person B replies at 4.9 seconds. Those two tokens are next to each other, let's say. But it's important to know when exactly they happened, because there is a pause here. Next innovation in this paper, they discovered that uh, just relying on one modality to describe the video or uh, it's not good because there was a video of underwater robot and vision only model describe it as human technology while the audio only model heard about the deep sea and called it earth's interior so neither of them was good enough they solved this by synthesizing data so first they put the raw video and have some LLM describe, generate captions, describe what the video shows. And for audio, they also have some LLM describe what the audio says. And then the third LLM would look at the both of the descriptions of the same audio. So that this audio corresponds to this video and then create a unified description or captions the, from both of these, they unify them that's actually higher quality, that includes all of the information. And then they use another reasoning-focused LLM to gen generate a lot of diverse questions and answers that correspond to this uh, multimodal clip video, that is. And they didn't start off by training audio and visual together. They trained them separately because it's easier and faster for the model to learn. It's too difficult to immediately start with training together audio and uh, visual video images frames so they first for example yeah they first trained uh, vision using this siglip vision encoder to encode vision images frames videos and after some time they added audio module and froze the vision module and then just trained audio as well and then uh, they trained both of them together that's gonna be it for this video join my school to become ai researcher we have all of these free courses linked below the video it's free for now but i'm gonna make it paid soon so hurry up and see you in the next video